Welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna do uh, part two in the series. Show you what I tried. I tried to mix these two together, ultramarine and yellow to make a neon type green so I could have some kind of acidic looking atmosphere and it looked really bad. So I wiped it all down and now I'm going with this uh, aqua, bright aqua green. Here it is from Basics and White. And so um, those are the only two colors I'm gonna use. Also, I wanted to let you guys know, I tried that skin thing, covering the globe and whatnot, and here's what happened. It looks dumb. But what I did was I put down polyacrylic on top of this plastic globe. And then I cut the skins off of the globe. Actually, I made a pattern off the lines on the globe and uh, cut these all out and fitted them. And then I, I put polyacrylic on and then I placed the skin on top and let it all glue together and then I polyacrylic over it, which uh, it's just, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do it. I, I thought about make it into a bug's butt and make some wings out of something, you know, I was thinking of mud, mud flat material, like a real thick black plastic uh, type recycled material. But um, I might do something else like uh, delicate instead, but I'm not real delicate. So some of my stuff tends to come out brutish. <laughs> so anyways, there's that. That's what happened. I was in a hurry because I was going to do it for the art alley and it didn't work out. So I changed my plan pretty much. And so now I'm going with the bright aqua green by basics and some white. And so I'm going to just start in trying to give this a toxic atmosphere. It's too much paint. I tried with the neon green. And the colors clashed at the oranges and the green. It looked good on top of this green, but it just looked, made it look kind of sick. And so, I'm going to do that. And so, I'm going to tap this atmosphere out a little further around here. Get a little more paint. See if I can get it to look a little toxic. It's a little opaque right now. I really am hating it. But just like with the uh, atmosphere here, you're just going to tap it out. Because I want it to be off the planet like an atmosphere type, uh, oh, sorry about that, like an atmosphere type, um, acid rain, or like the killer fog on the Hunger Games, yeah, something like that, because I want it to look and feel hostile, but... The neon green wasn't doing it. And on the purple, uh, Plenty to Floral Ibis painting I did with the purple and pink atmosphere, I made its atmosphere with a light purple and I thought it looked real nice and it worked out real good. And so that's what made me want to do it on this because it looked more alive to me. But you just want to tap a little on the outside there. Got way too much in this area here. And so what I'm going to do is in a minute, I'm going to get a wet paintbrush. And I'm going to just wet it a little bit and then dry it. And then come in and try to remove some of that. 
sometimes I paint in reverse order. I get stuff everywhere and then I go back in and clean it up. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of water on my brush. Just making sure to any lines that look straight or obvious, you just erase those too. But this brush is that shading mop brush that I use. So I'm just going back and forth in circles, round and round until I get some of the look I'm looking for. It looks better, yeah, than all that paint globbed up, that's for sure. So again, I'm gonna get my Brush it a little wet. Go back in some of these areas, just going in circles. Taking out what I don't like. Leaving that hard line there and that green color. A lot of people say, why are you doing that to your brush? I don't know. This just is what works for me. When I get done, I clean them. And uh, kind of comb them out to where they're back good while they dry. And they work great the next time. This edge is a little bit too much. And so I wet my paper towel. We'll just go back over it and try to knock some of it down. been having a lot of luck with painting recently. I'm in a weird area, so nothing's really working out. I've been in the garden, that's probably why. And really working over some tomatoes and cucumbers and Tired of going to the grocery store and getting this stuff from China that tastes like plastic and these poor people are getting worked to death for no money. I'd rather just 
try to grow my own. And cut back on dependence on the grocery store. Because I think that we're just getting, I don't know. There's better things out there. Even though I'm chubby, I am particular. So hard to tell what it's going to look like after the resin because everything's really weird before that part. It's hard to see. Just kind of guessing. <laughs> Not really. That looks awful. So when I hate it, you just go back with some water. This is what happened with the um, lime green, I just really didn't like it. And so I took all the top coat off that I had just put on. Messes up some parts of it. Be better if I used a clean rag. This one just lives in here. <laughs> Needs to spend more time in the laundry room. look at it and watch alien documentaries and all things going on with the Navy pilots over in California and uh, I just don't think I'm going to do any more to it. I think what we did the first time is probably uh, good. I think every time I touch it I take the stuff off and I've probably come back to it a few times and I just take it off, and it's kind of why I thought, well, I'll video this time. Maybe this time it'll happen, but I think what's happening is it wants to stay like it is. And so what I'm going to do is uh, just leave it just like it is. Like that. And I'm going to give the resin a go. Because now I've washed off anything that was on there. And uh, everything else was cured. Because I think it's been four weeks or so since I've put up a video for you guys. I had some jury duty and a bunch of shows. And I sold some pieces and one second place uh, with my feather number one. And that was real exciting because that's money. But let me tell you. They like to pay you for your artworks and whatnot a month after. So when I did the Tulsa Art Alley, theirs probably wasn't a month, but it has to go through processing. And that was the first thing I'd ever done. Like show type um, where you send in and you submit a proposal and, and they pick you. And then you're commissioned to do this piece downtown. And so I really didn't know how it went. And so I just kind of went along with everything because it was new and I was having a good time. And uh, it was it was really fun. But um, what's happened now is I've done several shows. One, I didn't sell anything, but it only had one piece in it. One, uh, I don't know if it's sold yet. It's on a journey. 
And uh, it's the portrait show, and uh, it's going around Whittier Square and things like that. And then uh, I did the More Color 2019 show. And that was a paid show. I paid $15 to submit five pieces. And they had a bunch of rules, and so I followed all the rules. Like, if you're going to hang a 16 by 20 canvas, and it is a regular canvas, not a gallery wrapped canvas like this one. If it's say like this, it has to be in a frame. And this is at most shows and all the ones I've applied to now, I'm no expert by any means. And I'm just sharing with you my experience, not my knowledge, uh, cause I'm still just starting out with this. So if it's like this, you have to frame it. And if it's gallery wrapped, you don't have to frame it. It has to have a hanger. It doesn't say anything about paper on the back. But I take these to Hobby Lobby and I let them put on the paper and frames and they only charge $2.50. And so they put on the paper on the back and then they put hangers on it. And it's usually a wire hanger. And so I really like the wire hangers. You know, a lot of people are like sawtooth, sawtooth, but with a wire hanger, you only need one nail hole and you can, you know, it's a lot easier for me just to throw a level up there and level it up. You know, if uh, something happens and somebody slams the door and it goes crooked, which they don't when they're professionally done because the hanger wires are so thick that it kind of, you know, makes a solid triangle once you first put it on there so it works really well I think so anyways back to the show I entered the 2019 more color 2019 show and it was paid show so it was a juried show and so you pay $15 for five pieces uh, my husband was like really uh, do we need to do that you know and he's him hawing around about it and I'm like look it's $15 you eat more than that at dinner when we go out to eat and so I did it and they accepted all five of my pieces in the show. And what happened was I ended up getting second place with the feather number one. And so that won $200 for getting second place. First place got 500, second place got 200. And then I sold three pieces of work. And so like the first show and the second show and the commission in the art alley, I haven't really got a feel for it. And so I just kind of went along. And so when I go to see what my final sales were and what, what to pick up, they said that they would process my payment within 30 to 45 business days. <laughs> and I was like, 30 to 45 business days? That could be up to three months. Three months to get paid. And so, I mean, that's fine for me. Could I have used the money? Sure. Who couldn't? Would I have liked to have had the money? Sure. Who wouldn't? But, you know, now we're just patiently waiting for a check to come in with all my winnings and earnings. And so, um, I just wanted to tell you guys, I get on these art groups called uh, like Dallas Call for Art, and then I'm on Oklahoma Call for Art, and things like that. And if you'll get into those groups, a lot of people post things that you can get into, and uh, some of it turns out to be exceptional, like like the $15 entrance. I wish I would have put in five more pieces and had like 10 pieces in the show instead of just five and paid thirty dollars because I sold well there and they liked my stuff and I won and and I think I could have sold more if I'd have put more in but it's always a hit and miss you just don't know just like the curiosity show with the beetle it didn't sell and it still hasn't sold and it didn't get a lot of likes on Facebook so <laughs> if anybody would like to buy the beetle it is for sale um, it's real cheap. I've got it at $95. It's 11 by 14 and it's beautifully framed. Let me go get it. I'll show you. I'm sure everybody's seen it, but it's 
I mean, we can figure something out and get it shipped. But this is the beetle. It's in this beautiful frame. I had it a real nice frame put on it. And then I signed the back. And then I signed the side, but you can't see it because it's in the frame. But anyways, this is my beetle. The horn beetle. You've seen it on a lot of videos. Poor thing. It needs some love. If anybody would like to love it up there, out there, hit me up because uh, <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> Anyways, like I said, I'm going to leave this. I think I'm going to video the resin process for this giant thing because this is a 36 by 36. And I've got a few different things I'm going to try. I thought about going just completely to cradle board, but I have all these to finish. And so moving forward, I might go into a cradled wood so that when you do resin, it holds up better because he's really sad. One lady said she resins the back. Like she turns it upside down and resins this side first. And lets it get in there and lets it set up. And then she resins this side. So that when it's laying there, the weight, it'll hold itself. I'm not too sure about that. But I've been thinking about it. <laughs> I don't know if it'll work or not. I don't know if that's what I'm gonna do, but I do know I have to either do something like that or build a box, cause this thing is huge. I know for practice that I've put cups under there thinking maybe the center will just be able to hold up and it'll hold it straight, but what that does is leaves a ring where you can see it and it settles in the resin, and so that's no good. But um, I'm sorry we didn't get any further with this. But it's just not letting me. Sometimes you just got to let it go. And that's what I'm going to do today. And so since that happened, I thought I'd tell you about the show. Apply to those call for arts. Uh, you never know what will happen. I had no idea I'd win. Second place, I had no idea I'd get the art alley commission. So uh, the more you get yourself out there and get your name out there and whatnot, the better off you are. And uh, I think it's great. It's a good time. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> I was thinking about, I like to be a hermit and an introvert and getting out there is not my thing. So I don't know. <laughs> you just got to push yourself where you feel awkward and weird and then you get better through it and, and, it, and it helps you to learn things. So I think I've said enough stupidity for one day. I'm going to talk to you guys later. And the next time we come on, I'll probably resin this. Like I said, uh, I'm going to just leave it for now, and, and I think it'll still be beautiful. And don't forget the History Channel and watch that Aliens Declassified. Uh, that's a good time. I love that stuff. Bye, y'all.